from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! We're broadcasting from Seattle, Washington. Black ops on green groups, a private security firm spied on Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth, and other environmental organizations, and passed the information to public relations firms and corporations involved in environmental controversies. We'll speak with Jim Ridgway of Mother Jones, who broke the story. Then groups organizing with tomato pickers might say they might have been spied on and vilified online by fast food conglomerate at Burger King. And as we broadcast from Seattle, we'll speak with the co-founder of the Seattle chapter of the Black Panther Party. It was founded 40 years ago this month. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Iraq's sectarian conflict has escalated with the killing of a top aide to Shia cleric Muqtada Dasada. The aide, Riyad al-Nuri, was killed Friday in Najaf. No group has claimed responsibility. Nuri was Sadr's top negotiator with the Iraqi government and also his brother-in-law. Hundreds of Sadr followers crowded Najaf Cemetery Saturday, blaming the United States for Nuri's death. Meanwhile, U.S. and Iraqi forces continue their attacks on Shia fighters in the Baghdad neighborhood of Sadr City. Witnesses say a series of clashes this weekend marked the heaviest fighting since the crackdown began late last month. In Baghdad Saturday, hundreds of demonstrators turned out in Baghdad to protest the U.S. occupation. Sheikh Abu Talib al-Amin of the Iraqi Famers Association condemned ongoing attacks on Iraqi civilians. The Iraqi people were expecting good things and reformation when the U.S. forces invaded Iraq. We thought that they would solve all the troubles that we suffered from. Now we can see different things. When they impose a blockade in an area killing its people, that means that they are not going to give a chance to oppressed people to express their opinions. Meanwhile, the Iraqi government says it's fired some 1,300 soldiers and police officers who refused to take part in last month's crackdown on Shia militants in Basra. The deserters included more than 100 officers, among them the commander and deputy commander of an engine brig of an entire brigade. Elsewhere in Iraq, a U.S. soldier was killed in Baghdad Saturday, capping the deadliest week for U.S. troops in Iraq this year. Nineteen service members were killed since last Sunday. The Bush administration has escalated its rhetoric against Iran. This weekend, senior U.S. officials told The Washington Post that Iran now poses the primary threat to Iraq. The official said Iran has increased its support for Shia militias battling U.S. and Iraqi troops. The Iranian president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, has previously ridiculed U.S. allegations of Iranian interference in Iraq, saying it's the U.S. that invaded and continues to occupy the country. In other Iraq news, Iraq's oil ministry has released a list of 35 oil companies it says have qualified for a chance to bid on future contracts. The list includes British Petroleum, Chevron, ExxonMobil, and Royal Dutch Shell. President Bush has confirmed he was aware top administration officials personally discussed and approved how top suspects in the so-called war on terror would be interrogated by the CIA. Last week, ABC News revealed a principles committee on the National Security Council agreed on controversial interrogation techniques, including physical assault, sleep deprivation, and waterboarding. The officials involved included Vice President Cheney, then National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, and then Secretary of State Colin Powell. In an interview with ABC News Friday, Bush said he had approved the meetings but did not take part. He said, quote, we started to connect the dots in order to protect the American people, and yes, I'm aware our national security team met on this issue, and I approved, he said. In a separate interview, Powell said he could not remember the details of the meetings. The American Civil Liberties Union is calling on Congress to appoint an independent prosecutor. ACLU Executive Director Anthony Romero said, quote, It's a very sad day when the President of the United States subverts the Constitution, the rule of law, and American values of justice. 
A leading human rights group has issued new allegations over the plight of U.S. military prisoners in Afghanistan. Human Rights First says dozens of prisoners transferred from U.S. military to the Afghan government have been subjected to unfair trials based almost entirely on allegations from U.S. officials. The prisoners' attorneys have been unable to call witnesses or conduct cross-examinations. The trials have lasted between 30 minutes to one hour, resulting in sentences ranging from three to 20 years. In Venezuela, tens of thousands of people gathered in Caracas Sunday to mark the sixth anniversary of the U.S.-backed coup against President Hugo Chavez. Chavez was briefly overthrown by a group of business and military leaders. He returned to the National Palace following a groundswell of protest and a counter-revolt by loyal soldiers. On Sunday, Chavez again addressed supporters outside the palace. Six years ago, not only was Venezuela's destiny at stake, but like Fidel Castro believed, the destiny of all Latin America was at stake. President Chavez also announced a new shipment of food aid to Haiti, which he said has suffered under global capitalism. In the name of Venezuela, I have decided to send 200 tons of food to the people of Haiti who are being assaulted by hunger and misery. Brotherly and heroic are the people of Haiti who are already suffering from the attacks of the empire's global capitalism and the lack of a true and profound solidarity from all of us. It is the least we can do for Haiti. He was brought to a stand. Haiti was brought to a standstill last week in a series of protests over the rising cost of food. On Saturday, President Rene Preval announced subsidies he said would cut the cost of rice by more than 15 percent. In response to the crisis, Haitian senators voted to remove Haitian Prime Minister Jacques Edouard Alexis, who had been blamed for mishandling Haiti's economy. Meanwhile, the World Bank has announced a series of emergency measures to address rising food costs worldwide. This weekend, finance ministers gathered at the biannual World Bank IMF meetings and endorsed a series of measures, including a $10 million grant to Haiti. World Bank President Robert Zolich said more than 100 million people are at risk of further impoverishment by the rising costs. The Cuban government has announced new measures to ease state-imposed curbs on wages and ownership. Thousands of Cubans will now be allowed to get title to state-owned homes. The government also says it plans to do away with limits on state wages. The measures are the first approved by Raul Castro since succeeding his brother Fidel Castro earlier this year. In Mexico. Two women journalists have been killed in the southern state of Oaxaca. Teresa Bautista Flores and Felicitas Martinez were returning from a reporting assignment when they were ambushed by attackers. The victims both worked in the indigenous community station called the Voice That Breaks the Silence. The Trik indigenous community in Oaxaca's San Juan Copeta uh, re, uh, launched the station earlier this year. And the Dalai Lama has announced he does not support a boycott of the Beijing Olympic Games. The exiled spiritual leader's home of Tibet has received increased international attention since the Chinese crackdown on dissident monks. In an interview with NBC News, the Dalai Lama said he does not want to punish China as a whole for the actions of its government. Do you want the world to boycott the Olympic Games no. to support no. your efforts in Tibet? No. Do you wish the President of the United States and other world leaders mm. might consider not attending the opening ceremonies mm. in support of your efforts in Tibet. That's up to them. It is very important that you see, make clear, not only just the Tibet case, but in China proper, the record of human rights is poor. The Dalai Lama is here in Seattle, Washington, for five days. In the Gaza Strip, 14 Palestinians have been killed since Palestinian militants crossed the Gaza border and killed two Israeli civilians last week. Six Palestinians, including at least two children, were killed Friday in the latest Israeli attack. 
Back in the United States, criticism is a mounting of outgoing Housing Secretary Alfonso Jackson's handling of the national housing crisis. Jackson is said to have ignored repeated warnings from within his agency, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, that the rise in subprime mortgages was increasing the risk of home foreclosures. During Jackson's tenure, foreclosures on government insured housing loans and default rates have hit a record high. In interviews with the Washington Post, HUD officials revealed Jackson used agency see money for perks including a personal chef and a full-time security detail. Jackson's office also opened a seven million dollar auditorium and cafeteria at HUD's head